This video is a memory story for the essay Outline and Evaluate Biological Explanations for Anorexia Nervosa. It's a PSYA 3 topic for the June 2016 exams and this memory story is actually linked to a revision video that I've made where each slide contains a paragraph of a model essay. So the link for that is in the description of this video and if you would like the PowerPoint to accompany the videos, tweet me at blonde underscore pretzel to request one. So the memory story for the biological explanations of anorexia stars Cheryl. She was Cole, but you know who I mean. Um, and so I want you to imagine Cheryl's at a party drinking Baileys and a man puts a gun loaded with serotonin against her head. Now, obviously, this is going to cause her great anxiety. Cheryl's the thinnest person at the party and the serotonin in the gun is the trigger for anorexia. The reason she's drinking Baileys is because that stands for Baylor et al. And it was Baylor et al. who said that um, disruption in serotonin levels caused anxiety and that's what triggered the anorexia. So you've got Cheryl drinking Baileys at a party with a man with a gun loaded with serotonin against her head causing her anxiety and it's that anxiety that triggers the anorexia. So, the next paragraph, Cheryl is so shocked that she has to lie down on a trolley and suddenly she realises she's being wheeled into a PET scan. And they're looking on the screen and they see something strange. There's gangrene jumping up and down at the base of her spine. So, this represents the idea that, um, from what Kay et al said, that um, anorexia is caused by overactivity of the dopamine receptors in the basal ganglia. So the reason I've said that they can see gangrene jumping up and down on the basin of her spine is a kind of visual representation of that overactivity of the dopamine receptors in the basal ganglia. So Cheryl comes out the PET scan and there's this amazing beautiful buffet but she doesn't eat any of it because she thinks the food is covered in gangrene. So this represents that Kay said that the overactivity of the dopamine receptors means that she's not interpreting rewards properly and so she sees that lovely buffet as absolutely disgusting and covered in gangrene so she doesn't eat it. The next AO1 is that uh, next part of the story as well is that Cheryl Desai decides that she's not had a wedding for a while and she's thinking hmm, maybe if I go back to that party I can find a new husband so she goes back but has a look at the men and finds them all incredibly unattractive so she definitely doesn't want to get married and she definitely doesn't want to have a baby with any of them so this represents the evolutionary adaptation to avoid sexual maturation so Cheryl gives up on finding a new husband at the party and instead she thinks, oh, I'm quite hungry, I think I'll go and find the buffet. But when she gets to the buffet, the caterers have completely cleared it away, there's nothing left. And she's gutted and starts running from room to room to try and find some food. But when she sees the host, she doesn't want to appear rude, so she denies being hungry. So this represents the fact that symptoms of anorexia nervosa, like... Uh, hyperactivity, starvation and denial of starvation um, are reflection of what happened in the EEA, the environment of the evolutionary adaptation, in response to famine. So in the, EE, in the EEA if there was a famine then um, it was Geisinger said that people would become anorexic because it would give them hyperactivity they would starve themselves, deny that starvation, and it meant they could migrate much more easily to somewhere that did have food. So when Cheryl's running from room to room, that's the hyperactivity, sees the host, denies being hungry, she doesn't want to be rude, but actually she's starving. So the next paragraph, Cheryl's feeling a bit depressed because she's got no man, she's got no food, so she goes to see the doctor who prescribes SSRIs, which you know are antidepressants, but they don't work. So she reads the instructions and it says take with food and suddenly they do work. So this is representing the fact that SSRIs don't work as a treatment for anorexia, which questions whether serotonin is a causation of anorexia. However, Cave um, identified that could be because the malnutrition um, means that the um, SSRIs can't work properly. And Kay found that when recovering anorexics took SSRIs and they did work so that's the idea of when you know she takes them with food then they do work to prevent relapse. 
So the next thing is that Cheryl's feeling much better because the antidepressants have kicked in and she thinks, oh, I'll go for a lovely walk in the park and she comes across an ice cream van. The ice cream van, across the side of it, um, is the, are the words Castro Forniel's amazing vanilla ice creams. So the, the ice cream man is this big Spanish dude, Castro Forniel, and he's got a big twirly moustache, and he gives her a massive vanilla ice cream, and she accidentally drops it so it's wasted, so therefore she remains thin. So this is to represent that Castro Forniel found greater levels of homovanillic acid, which is a waste product of dopamine in recovering anorexics, compared to healthy controls. So because, so the vanilla ice cream represents the homovanillic acid, she dropped it so it was wasted and so therefore she's thinner. So the more homovanillic acid means the more waste, wasted product of the dopamine and so the thinner that you are. So Cheryl turns around and she suddenly sees a very obese man who wants to eat lots of ice cream, but he's got no arms. So she wangs loads of ice cream into his mouth. So he just sits there very still, totally enjoying himself. So that represents that Wang said that obese people have lower levels of dopamine receptors and that weight is inversely related to body weight. So it's the opposite of anorexics who have overactivity of dopamine receptors in the basal ganglia. So Cheryl decides to go for a little walk around the park and she comes across a play area where there are lots of 11-year-old uh, children, so they're on a year six trip to the park. The boys offer the girls sweets to play kiss chase, but the girls run away so they don't get any sweets and they remain thin. So this is representing the fact that menarche, which means pre-pubertal girls, and amenorrhea, which means cessation of periods, um, and I, that's why I chose year six children, because usually they haven't reached puberty yet. Um, so they are the ones, they don't want to play kiss chase, which means in, in this representation, they don't want to have babies. So they're running away from the boys, not eating the sweets, and they're getting thin. So it's evidence to, well, it's not really evidence, is it? Because it's an evolutionary idea, but it's, uh, it's a support of that evolutionary idea of the reproduction suppression hypothesis. So the next paragraph, uh, the girls want to speak to a therapist about their parents not protecting them from the boys wanting to play kiss chase, but the therapist says he does not need to see them. So this represents the fact that biological explanations means that therapists don't need to speak to people about familial issues, meaning their family, because it's a biological cause. Uh, the next paragraph is that the girls decide to go on holiday to get over their trauma and they buy travel insurance. One of them loses their bags and the insurance company has no, no choice but to pay out. So this is representing the real world application that because of biological research providing a biological reason for anorexia that the insurance companies have to pay out for treatment of anorexia just like as, uh, as if it was a biological disease like schizophrenia. So, next paragraph, the insurance company not only gives them a payout, but gives them antidepressants to get over their trauma. The girls take them and feel better, and the parents are glad and don't feel guilty about what happened. So this represents the fact that biological explanations say it's a biological dysfunction, not a dysfunctional family that causes anorexia, so the family feel less guilty. And it also represents the fact there's a range of treatments available, including those drug therapies. So the last part of the story is we think way back to those poor boys left in the park and they're feeling very left out and so they stop eating their sweets and get thin. And this is representative of gender bias in research. So boys and men are often ignored in research to do with anorexia and this questions the reliability of such research. Um, because if men and boys are left out then if you, if you try to replicate the studies you might get different results. So that's the memory story. I recommend you have another listen to it with the PowerPoint um, to have a look at the pictures and just really imagine Cheryl Cole at that party, going into the PET scan, uh, going to the doctors and, and think about her walking around the park, seeing the ice cream van, really picture it in your mind and follow the story and say it out loud as well. Get someone to test you on it to make sure that you understand the whole essay. Now you can't just kind of learn the story, you do need to learn all the points, so that's why I recommend using the 
other revision video and the PowerPoint with it. Um, and make sure you write it out as well. There's nothing like writing it out to get it embedded in your long-term memory. So good luck with your exams and uh, maybe this one will come up.